Abstract. Yeah, no shit. I was just trying to, um, well, never mind. It's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's running to full day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing difficult decisions. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. Until my saves get deleted. You never know when, um, who am I talking to? Can you, can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Huh? Are you doing like a fourth wall break now? Anything. Please help me. Uh, okay. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Okay. You ready? I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've uh, written for today. You seem a little too excited. Yuri smiles and takes a deep breath. I like just holding it. Hmm? Uh, I mean, the poem turned out good. It's, uh... Well, there are some things that you could work on, but that doesn't really matter. Feels like anything written by you is a treasure. Haha. <laughs> Came out a little awkward. Let's move on. Here's the poem I wrote. You don't have to like it or anything. Wheel. That's a new one, right? Yeah. A rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding, bolt head, linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a dock chip, a portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox. Expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God, swimming with open water in all directions, drowning, a prayer written in blood, a prayer written in t time, devouring snakes with human eyes, a thread connecting all living human eyes, a kaleidoscope of holy stakes, ex uh, exponential gearbox, a sky of exploding stars, God disproving the existence of God, a wheel rotating in six dimensions, 40 gears and a ticking clock, a clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet, clock that ticks 40 times every time it ticks every second time, a bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a dark ship to another world, a kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks, a time-devouring prayer connecting a sky of 40 years and open human eyes in all directions, breathing gearbox, breathing bolt head, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing god, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayers, breathing skies, breathing wheel. It was good. I liked it. It was uh, maybe a little abstract, but um, yeah, it was good. Haha, <laughs> doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind's been a little uh, hyperactive lately, so I uh, had to take it out on your on your pen. Ah, uh, that, that that's a, a pen fell out of your bo uh, backpack yesterday, so I took it home for a safekeeping end. Ooh, don't tell me you wrote that poem in your own fucking blood. Like you pricked yourself with a pencil and then used the blood to, to write this poem. I mean, it was some black ink, so. You're messed up in the head, girl. I, um, I just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it. I mean, it kind of, kind of sounded like you were either trying to, uh, uh, awaken an elder god. Or try to achieve heaven. And now you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just... Uh, can you uh, present this conversation never happened? You can keep the po keep poem, though. If you like a special poem, would like to read it? Yes, I'm going to step away from my PC, and then I want to read it. A dream. I was staying over. I'm oh, sorry, I'm so away from my mic right now because <laughs> I'm so afraid of getting jump scared. <clears throat> a dream. I was staying over at my friend's place. There were four of us. I drifted off to sleep while everyone was talking and watching TV. In my dream, I was still at my friend's house. The only difference was that there were nails sticking out of the walls everywhere. And there was also someone I didn't recognize. The person I didn't recognize told a joke and everyone laughed. I woke up to the sound of everyone laughing at something that happened on the TV. So the laughing was not part of the dream, it was the noise that woke me up. I wonder who that person was and how they knew to tell a joke at that moment. Okay. Interesting. I would call that more of a like, kind of like a short story than a poem, but... Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if everyone could uh, come sit at the front room. Oh good, you're still alive. <laughs> and not crazy. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Do we really have to do something to, for the festival? It sounds like we, we could put together anything good in just a few days. 
We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really uh, do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since this bear joined and we've uh, started with some club activities. I mean, yeah, you're definitely a lot more emotional, I'll tell you that. But this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members. And the festival is our only re real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyways? You already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. That's key. I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with many people as you can? To inspire them and find the same feeling that brought you here in the first place? The literature club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can do anywhere else. It should be a place to uh, intimidate, intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Despair? Uh, oh come on. You can't take advantage of Despair to agree with you just because he doesn't uh, know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica. Do you really think any of us here joined the club with uh, other people in mind? You really never even talked until Despair joined. As for me, I just liked, uh, like it better in here than I do at home. And Despair isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. And, and Monica? Sorry, but you're really the only one who's uh, so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are, are, are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for, for once. Those are some harsh words. Monica is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Despair uh, want to get more members too. Right. I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue the situation... Um... No. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club... It's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here uh, saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Spare, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Get some pussy? <clears throat> well... It's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact... If I remember, you were even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at the desk. What's the point of all this anyways? What if starting this club was a mistake? Hmm. Now you've done it, Natsuki. What, me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't, don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being uh, that for me? There aren't there aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking away anything. No, it is fair. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the uh, direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I would have just joined any other stupid club. But this one... I mean... Oh, come on, don't tear up. I mean... At least for a little bit of time. Things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Oh, come on. Natsuki... Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. Mm, this is bad. Don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I, I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious spread? I mean, like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. Nobody would cry if she killed herself. Oh, please, not another suicide. Uh. Uh. Man, I just, I just got goosebumps all over me. Oh, man, this, this, this game is really... Silent. It's it's some other kind of horror that I love. It's like pure psychological torment, and I love it. Even though I'm probably going to lose some sleep uh, tonight, but oh well. I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision to serve for the club. What about you, Despair? What do you want to get out of this club, Kuchi? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. 
I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Was that just something on your face? Oh, you're... There's blood dripping out of your eye. Okay. Uh, stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. I just saw it out, out of the corner of my eye, like, like while, while reading the text, so there was something here, I thought it was like a fly on my monitor, but no, you are, your eye is bleeding. So you would like to help Monica with the festival, and I'm on your side as, as well. Alright. Well, maybe we can all talk to Natsuki tomorrow. You're not. Hey, Yuri? Huh? Still, still bleeding? No, no, it stopped. Uh, I know things were a little awkward yesterday, but I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president. And also a wonderful friend. Monica, I want to do everything, everything I can to make this the best club ever. Okay, me too. Yeah, let's all go home for the day. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay, I look forward to it. Shall we go to Spare? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but uh, I'm going to chat a little bit with Spare before we leave. Just to see what he thinks of, the, of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Uh... Yuri looks a bit troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see you to uh, the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I, I don't want to be alone with Monica in one room. That's just something so foreboding. Monica voices Yuri ex exits the classroom. Phew. Things have been a bit hectic lately, haven't they? Oh, you don't say. Despair, I just want to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel kind of like I'm responsible for that as president. And I really do care about you, you know? You seem to be caring about me a little bit too much. I don't like seeing the other girls uh, give you a hard time. With how mean Natsuki is and everything. And Yuri being a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. I mean, I'm real. I'm a guy sitting behind a computer desk, so... What are you implying with that? That the others aren't real? You know what I mean? But it's weird, because uh, in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gotten to spend any time together. Uh, I mean, it's technically only been a couple days. It's been a lot lo longer than that. So you remember the last time loop too? Like the, the, the last timeline. Oh man. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say something weird. There are just some things I've been hoping to talk uh, about with you. Things I know only you could understand. Wait, not yet. No, no, stop it. Stop it. What? Oh. Okay. Okay, now let's uh, try and getting a perfect poem for Natsuki once again. Kitty. Candy. Fun. Smile. Sweet. Sister. Sad Ho hold up. Um. Okay. She probably wouldn't like family. <laughs> Laugh. Oof. Uh, wonderful? Yes. Twirl. Lust. No, lust was Yuri. Mouse? Yes. I will save. And click the ominous button. Hmm. Bunny? Cheeks? Uh, bouncy? Stro stro strawberry? Chocolate? Uh, hair? I feel like it's gonna jump scare me any moment now. Shopping. Uh, socks, skirt, uh, cute. As if nothing ever happened. Hi, Despair. I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? I brought my best tea today. You seem awfully happy today. 
Monica, I told you not to... Ugh. Is she really late again? Inconsiderate as usual, Natsuki. Excuse me? Must you always interrupt my conversations with your uh, incessant yelling? What are you talking about? You say that like I do it on a regular basis or something. I just wasn't paying attention, okay? I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gotten into you lately? Look, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another new member wouldn't hurt as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl would be nice this time. So, Natsuki. Nobody cares. Ooh, shut the fuck up, kill yourself. Why don't we go look for some coins under the vending machines or something? Ooh. <laughs> Uh, and now we've made a cry. Holy shit, okay. Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. Haha. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and still trying to make time for piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. It motivates me to work hard for a festival too. Anyway, despair. What do you want to do today? I wasn't thinking we could. We already have plans today. Oh, oh do we? Ah, is that so, Yuri? That's correct. The spare's already engaged in the novel that uh, we're reading together. Aren't you glad I've already gotten him into literature, Monica? Why are you so happy all of a sudden? It's kind of creepy. I... I suppose. I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys can do whatever you want. Yes! Uh, uh, thank you for understanding, Monica. I mean, Yuri, girl, uh, I love you, but... um, You're kind of freaking me out. Actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I take some, make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice uh, cuppa. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch her as she retrieves a small water pitcher from the shelf, the kind of water with water filter inside. Can you hold it for a second? Sure. Yuri hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this in at the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the teacher's desk. I simply watch her movements. To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms. Especially because of her long legs, she really appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thanks, I'll be right back. Ah, I might as well walk with you. That's okay. You stay here. I won't take long. Mm. Yeah, I kinda got like a messed up theory, like why she wants to go to the bathroom alone. Because she wants to, you know. Make her arms look like a cutting board. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. So she's going to, to the bathroom to cut like she's on a, she's on a fucking smoke break. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ah, uh, did you really leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's just filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said it wouldn't take long. Something holding up. Or maybe she got diarrhea. I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for you to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. Ha, 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 ha. What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. Ugh. Sharp and hair, like something is uh, sucking the air through the teeth. Are they in pain? Oh, yeah, I guess there goes my theory. It's correct. We should get the corner and peer around it. Yuri? Oh, crap. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, that's that's actually really hard to... It's actually really hard to, 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 to look at. Oh, oh, crap. Yeah! She was just uh, on a smoke break. I'm back. Thanks for waiting passionately. Despair, do you like oolong tea? Oh, yeah. Anything is fine. Very well. Yuri sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm uh, making tea for others. Even if I'm not an expert on tea or anything. On, uh, or anything. <laughs> In that case, you'll only be even more impressed. Huh, perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little, a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and cutting, and I decided that I would uh, try expressing myself a little bit more, by cutting. It turns out it's not very hard for me to do. Uh, we'll see who's around, anyway. Huh. 
It's okay, I can fix her. That's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Despair. It's very endearing. That's... Yuri wasn't kidding. I don't even know if I can keep up with this. I want Yuri pour a cup of tea uh, for each of us. Despair, I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Huh? Why is that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can reach my back against the wall rather than bending over my desk. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have back pain uh, fairly regularly, so I do my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why is that? It's most likely because my... Uh... My... Your posture, right? Always hunched over like that while reading? Yes. I have terrible reading posture. But that's why we should sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go ahead and get the book. I retrieved the book from my back. Ah, I have some chocolate as well. Mm, time to feed you some chocolate again. It's a bag of small cho chocolate candies. I take it, since it's, uh, it'll go well with tea. You and I then sit against the wall, teacups at our sides. As if in sync, we assume the same reading position as last time, each holding one half the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to focus on reading like that? Yuri was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me a teacup. Holding it with my hand that's not uh, holding the book, I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus. Because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri has noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I finally manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Ah, sorry. I really let go of the book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Oh, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Uh, are you sure? Well, if I touch it, then it might get smudges on the pages. Ah, you're right. You didn't think about that. Open up wide, here comes the airplane. Brrr. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She holds it so that I don't have any hard, uh, any hard of a time reading from it. But as a result, her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate candy and pop it into my mouth. <laughs> then I take another chocolate and take a swig. Mm. Stay hydrated, kids. And I hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. She simply pats her lips as if the situation was completely natural. But that means I, uh, I can't stop here. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Huh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did... Did I just... Yuri looks at me uh, like she needs to confirm what just happened. Okay, yeah, but this is like, this is like the exact, exact same situation that we were in last time. Hmm. So, so far nothing weird has happened. Like, in the, this in this scene here. Uh, um, despair. Sorry. Guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh... Yuri starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't. Despair. Suddenly, Yuri forcefully grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. I was about to say something very wrong there. My teacup, cup get, my teacup gets knocked over. Despair. Lights go out. My heart. My heart won't stop pounding, Despair. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Despair? Yuri suddenly presses my hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. It even makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. Oh, fuck. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> uh. Oh, fuck. That's... Again, the goosebumps. Ooh. Stop staring at me. Uh. Stop staring. Uh. Oh, I'm actually glad for Monica to cock block this <laughs> year. Uh, um, it's time to share poems.